Resident Evil Village has been one of the most anticipated games for many PC gaming horror fans ever since its announcement back in June 2020. The final released product, however, was not something that the PC gamers were really amazed about, mainly due to poor DRM implementation interfering with the performance of the game. The issue was so bad that the definitive way to properly experience the game was to get a cracked version of it which removed the DRM interference and provided a much smoother experience for anyone looking to get up close and personal with many of the village's antagonists. With the latest patch to the Resident Evil Village, however, Capcom has supposedly tuned down the DRM interference and also introduced AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR to the game in order to provide a more enjoyable gaming experience. For completion's sake, it is worth noting that also none of the console versions had any performance issues due to DRM. So, has Capcom finally fixed their game after receiving a backlash from the community? And how good is the FSR implementation in the game? That's what we're looking at today. Just for the record, I have been deliberately avoiding playing Resident Evil Village due to poor FOV support and DRM performance issues, so I don't have any saved game files available for me which are further down into the game's storyline. And that is the reason why I shall be only making my conclusions based on what I can see from the very beginning of the game and why you should take these subjective thoughts with a grain of salt. That being said, let's go over my PC setup and get to the results. My PC consists of an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X CPU paired with 4 sticks of 8GB G-Skill Dryden C DDR4 RAM running at 3600MHz. The 48-inch LG C1 4K TV is being powered by a Sapphire 6800 XT and should anyone care about the motherboard which ties it all together, then that's an Asus Strix X470F. Now before we get to FSR, let's cover the two main issues which I had with Resident Evil Village which helped me back from playing it upon its initial release. The unchangeable FOV and poor performance due to DRM. I'm glad to report that the DRM issues seem to have been fixed with this latest patch to the game and the performance during action-heavy scenes is now really good, so good job there Capcom. And that doesn't mean that the game is fully optimized though, as even during the first opening minutes of the gameplay, in this scene when I decided to test the FSR effects on the game, you can clearly see that the GPU utilization just drops without any real reason when looking at the direction of this village. Even when the FSR is at the full performance mode and the image quality is similar to an unpeeled potato smeared with Vaseline, the GPU seems to simply twiddle its thumbs and don't know what to do with the game. This is very unfortunate as this also means that there are certain sections in this game where it doesn't matter what you do, you will not be able to get a high refresh gaming experience. People owning 144Hz and 240Hz displays are probably going to be pretty angry with Capcom over this. For me, this is also a bit of an issue, as the LG C1 OLED is known to get raised near black gamma whilst using variable refresh rate and when the frame times keep fluctuating. Luckily, there's not that much near dark content here, but it would definitely be annoying should it happen in, say, an indoor section in a huge manner of the game which is very atmospheric and generally pretty dimly lit. For the unchangeable FOV in the game, the only working workaround that I found to work with this latest patch is the lazy FOV changer. Although it complains and swears in errors, it manages to hold it together and apply the FOV changes to the game, so at least now the game is playable without having to keep a bucket around for motion sickness. Come on Capcom, did you really not learn this from Resident Evil 7 already? Oh yeah, what am I saying, like huge corporations would ever listen to its customers. But now let's have a look at the brand new FSR implementation patched into Resident Evil Village. I run my games with Radeon Image Sharpening filter turned on by default as I love a more crisp look to games. This means that whenever I enable FSR, the overall image will always look a bit more blurry than without FSR. I mention this because a lot of people getting introduced to FSR get the feeling that the overall quality of FSR's ultra quality mode can sometimes exceed the one they have with native resolution. I'm absolutely certain that there is no way that FSR's upscaled image can look better than the native image, even if you simply consider the fact that what FSR essentially is, is an upscaler with CAS applied. If you are someone who disagrees on this, just enable Radeon Image Sharpening on the native image and try to get a better quality output using FSR. I am certain that it cannot be done, but I'm also open to being proven wrong. So let's have a friendly debate in the comments down below. Now, regarding the actual results you've been seeing in the background. 
As you can see, the native 4K image is clear, sharp and performs reasonably well on the 6800 XT. Once FSR gets introduced to the mix, even on ultra quality setting, the image gets blurry and some of the fine detail is lost. The effect would not be as drastic if a RIS or Radeon image sharpening was turned off, but as mentioned before, I love the Radeon image sharpening filter and it works really well with this game. As we move down from the FSR ultra quality preset to quality, balance and performance, the amount of Vaseline being smeared across the screen increases drastically. And in all honesty, with this 48-inch LG C1 display, pretty much only FSR ultra quality option is a viable means to increasing the FPS without blurring up the image too much. This could very well be due to the sheer size of this display and me just being one meter away from it whilst gaming. Speaking of FPS, the performance increase from native to FSR ultra quality is okay, but not so amazing that I would give up the crisp image. These measurements are also taken whilst the ray tracing has been set to its highest possible values. What I would personally do with this game is that I would much rather disable ray tracing altogether as it makes little to no noticeable difference in the overall image quality. Take the 30 plus FPS boost from that and maybe consider FSR as an option for lower tier GPUs trying to run the game at 4K. And you might ask, that why do I only talk about 4K results and not 1440p or 1080p? Well, I believe that FSR makes the most sense on higher resolutions such as 4K, which have traditionally been almost impossible to run smoothly at higher frame rates, even with higher end graphics cards. I did test 1440p and 1080p FSR modes in Resident Evil Village, and for 1440p I wouldn't really go lower than the ultra quality setting, as the image simply gets a bit too blurry for my liking, and for 1080p I wouldn't really dare to touch FSR altogether, as the amount the amount of blur you get is just bad due to the tiny source image that the upscaler needs to do its magic from. In any case, I hope that I wasn't too bitchy in this video and did you found it entertaining if nothing else. I will be keeping an eye out for FSR supported titles coming up in the future and will try to cover them should anything interesting pop up. But it's just sad to see that even after fixing the DRM interference issues, Capcom still has not optimized Resident Evil Village on the PC. Will we ever get a constant 99% utilization on our GPUs throughout the whole game? I doubt it, as that would cost Capcom some time and resources to optimize their game, which they only tend to do once there is a bigger public backlash. In any case, I would like to thank you very much for watching, consider subscribing if you aren't already and share this content around as it really helps out the channel a lot. Thank you once more for watching and may you have a lovely rest of your day. Whenever, wherever you are. Bye-bye.